Hi guys, welcome to another short video by Antiques Arena. My name is Walter O'Neill. Here's another uh, video in my series of car boot sale finds. Um, been to Abergavenny again today up in um, Gavilon car boot sale and I've had a nice assortment of items. These little group of little miners lamps you've seen already, I purchased these the other day. Um, they're in this video for a different reason and I'll show you that now. But other than that, everything else has been purchased today. Um, got a beautiful Chinese clock, needs a little attention, but it's got a beautiful look to it. Nice carriage clock, some candlesticks. So what I'll do, I'm going to give you a little um, glimpse of everything now. Um, a little talk, show you what it is, give you a little close-up. So, hope you find it interesting, guys. Okay, I'm going to start with this little job lot. As I've already said, this group here, this little four miners lamps here, purchased the other day, so they don't really come into today's buy-in. Um, had a beautiful um, Thomas & Williams um, miners safety lamp there. Um, Abdeh, you have another miners lamp here, which is Douglas in Wales, but this one's a commemorative one, 50 years. We have a miners strike 1984 plate this one's uh, issued by the National Union of Miners Mine Workers in 1984 during the strikes of 1980s this is when a lot of this type of stuff was made so for them by the miners so they could make money um, now we have a couple of large brass pieces this one's 12 inches tall uh, brass miner and we have a couple of smaller brass miners this one here has lost his pick it's not the end of the world they're nice quality as you can see that's quite a nice little group now all, all in all it stands me in for 40 pound uh, that's for everything you see there in this group um, the miners lamp there at the back goes for between sort of 40 and 50 this little one sells for 20 to 30. You're talking probably 20, 25 pound for the large miners la uh, miner. And then coming down sort of 10s, 15 and 5 and 10. And probably 10 or 15 pound for the group there. And this plate's probably about 20 pound. But what I'm going to do to make it really interesting for people and to get a quick sale, I'm going to put it on as a collection of mining memorabilia. And I'm going to put it up for 100, 110 pound and see what offers I get. But it shouldn't be far off £100 when finished. So I'm happy with that. I'll be a good little earner. I'll move on next then, guys, to something that was brought to my table. A um, friend of mine, dealer, brought this to my table. He didn't know what it was. I ain't 100%. Uh, it's turn brass. You can see the, uh, the turn in there. Um, it's very heavy. I'd say it's not far off half a kilo. Um, this eagle looks American with the star above it, don't know. It has a, a look and a feel to me that it's military. A nice little military paperweight. I ended up, I gave him £4 over the counter for this, uh, purely because I thought it was different. I'm not going to lose on it. Just as a decorative paperweight, somebody's going to give me 10 or £15, no problem at all. So that was okay. We go on next then to a bit of carving. Um, to say it's weird would be an understatement. Looks African, lovely colour to the wood, really strange. Obviously they're wearing a mask doing some sort of tribal dance. But it is a really nice little carving. Do you know I paid £2 for that this morning? And I am really happy with it. So I'll put that down now. A couple of days ago, I spoke to you about barley twist candlesticks. I showed you I had a pair, standard pair with a solid twisted uh, stem. Now the ones I told you to look for were the ones with the open stems. Now if you look here, here is an example of what I meant. It's two pieces. 
openly entwined. Now I had a pair of them this morning, they come in one pound per candlestick. Now the open barley twists, these are not the best example I've seen, but the open barley twists for a pair like that are going to be between 30 and 50 pound. I'd say this pair is closer to 30. However, a really nice pair of candlestick that's, that will fly out. Now I had an assortment of brass figures. Um, you had the blacksmith, a little Victorian man, obviously the uh, miners that you've already seen. This one got a fair bit of age to it. We had the man on the pipe, sitting down on the bench playing the pipe. These have all got good weight. Now I paid £20 for the entire collection of brass, brass figures this morning. And again we have another man there. Um, I'm very happy with them. I'm going to do another video in a moment just to show you a couple of options that I can do with these. Um, you'd be surprised how easy they are to move. We come along then to an absolute beaut of a decanter. What we have here is a square decanter. Um, we're talking crystal, we're not talking press glass. Beautifully cut. Nice cut pattern. Faceted stopper with a sliced panel. Why is that sliced? I'll show you in a minute. Normally you'd see them round. Um, can't find a signature underneath. However, let's see if I can capture it for you. The decanter is beautifully engraved. I don't know if I can catch it. There we go. Ben Nevis, uh, Scottish single malt whiskey. Why is it not? There we go. Ben Nevis, single malt. Scottish whisky, um, and there's their crest and all their details. It's a special decanter produced in a limited number. There you see limited edition. It's not presented to anybody, it is simply a limited edition distillery decanter. The decanter itself isn't signed, but I would assume it's Edinburgh Crystal. The fact is, a Scottish distillers. Um, it's a very good uh, whiskey producer and a really nice top quality uh, decanter. Now the fact it's limited edition, I would assume these were given to, I would say, either their board of governors or their upper class management or to maybe investors in the company. But they certainly wouldn't have been put on sale. I paid a fiver for that this morning. And to be honest with you, I see potential of £75 in that. I may be wrong, but... Uh, a good quality distiller's decanter like that. If someone wants to collect um, pub memorabilia or anything to do with breweries, that's the perfect item because you can even fill it and use it. Next then we have a little carriage clock. Now it's beveled glass. What we have here is a German clock. It has a Swiss movement. This is a carriage clock. Um, Age-wise, I'd say it's probably 1950s, 60s. And you have the access point underneath to go in and do any work you want to do. Start them off. Somebody will probably shout to me, say you're not supposed to do that. There you see it's going in nicely. And just in a really nice pretty carriage clock. Bevel glass, good weight, Swiss movement, German clock. I paid a tenner, it's going to be £35-£40 with my eyes closed. Um, more than happy with that one. Next piece we have is an antique. We have a turn of the century, so at least a hundred year old. And it's Chinese. 
mantle clock. Now it needs work. Um, so I had little bits of damage here that somebody's coloured over to the lack of work. And these pillars here are supposed to be one there and one on the back there that ain't there. But it's running. It looks beautiful despite the fact it's lost the one or two bits of brass and a bit of the lacquer's had touch ups. The brass has got this beautiful lacquered finish that you want to find on the earlier brass clocks. And there you go, you can see it going beautiful. As you see, there's the key. There's uh, a name inside of Buren and Swiss Maid over there. And as you can see, that is a really nice little mantel clock. To be honest with you, I like Chinese. Uh, I like the Chinese antiques and I like the look of the Chinese pieces. So I may end up for now anyway, keeping that on my shelf. I haven't really decided. Beautiful little thing. There we have it guys. Um, not a lot of money spent. The Chinese clock, um, I don't think I said, was a tenner. Um, if I retail it, it's probably going to be about £35-40 pound because of the condition it's in. If it was in better condition, I'd ask a hell of a lot more. But it's decorative enough, it has the look. And I may even be able to get a few of these finials. Or if I can't, I'll take these two off and get four finials that I can put on so you won't even see there's any missing. It's been some nice pieces. Um, obviously the mining memorabilia, the fact I live in an old coal house um, in the mining valleys of South Wales has uh, appealed to me. Um, I'm not a drinker but uh, the decanter um, with the engraving of the distillers on it, beautiful, I love it. Really nice item. All this brass. Uh, there's many, many options you can do with brass, besides retailing. So I'm going to have a look at uh, the brass again. The paperweight's interesting. If anybody knows what the paperweight is, I wouldn't mind your, uh, your opinions. Um, I am grateful whether right or wrong. More than happy for your opinions. As with the uh, little African carving, looks really, really nice. I love the colour on the wood um, and the quality of the carving. It's only a small six inch figure, but it's really pretty. So as you can see guys, it, it hasn't been a bad morning, uh, considering uh, it's come from one little market and it was a small market. But still, a nice little hoard. So I hope you enjoyed seeing the bits. Uh, if you did, I would appreciate a like and a share. Uh, you'll find us on Facebook, Antiques Arena. You'll find us on eBay, Antiques Arena Clearance. And we have our own website, antiquesarena.co.uk. Thanks for watching guys, bye for now.